What happens if? What do we do if? That's been what I've avoided. I've watched it from the outside because I thought to myself, self, this will all work itself out. And I was wrong. And as is usually the case when I'm wrong, I wasn't actually wrong. When I'm wrong, it's because a coach or a kid or an official screwed it up. And in this case, there were supposed to be more upsets, and there weren't. And so here we are. We're going into conference championship Saturday. The Pac-12 championship games tomorrow night, and then we got the other title games on Saturday. And we're still asking questions like, what if all the undefeated teams win? And we've got Georgia, Michigan, Washington, and Florida State there. Do you realize how Bill Hancock's statement that we talked about earlier in the show comes into play? Colin, I, I didn't tell you to do this. If you can't, just let me know. Could you scroll in that computer of yours in there? Could you bring me Bill Hancock's quote back up? Thank you. So I want you to think along with me here. Think about the undefeated teams winning out. Georgia wins out, or, or Michigan wins, they're in. But Washington and Florida State, what if they win? And now we go back to Bill Hancock, executive director of the playoff, Bill Hancock, saying our job is to rank the four best teams. That most deserving is not anything in our lexicon quote. That's what I want you to pay attention to. We continue the quote. They are there to rank the best teams in order. That's what they do. Keep that in mind. So Bill Hancock says most deserving is not part of our equation. We strictly care about the best. Well, here's what I want. If this happens... If the undefeateds win, if it's Georgia, Michigan, Washington, Florida State, I need Bill Hancock or I need Boo Corgan or I need some committee official on the record and I need them to look a camera in the eye and I need them to say Florida State is not more deserving than Texas, they're better. Florida State, not more deserving than Alabama, Washington, or Oregon or whoever would be there, they're better. They're better than Ohio State. They're better. And then I would like an odds maker to walk in the room. Mind you, this is not how I think this should work, but it's Hancock's words, not mine. And I want an odds maker to say, sir, we would favor Oregon even with two losses by about 11 or 12 over Florida State right now. What do we do? Well, according to his words, you put Oregon in. They're not going to, of course. So that's one of many reasons why I had a problem with that quote. How do we handle Alabama? Let's just talk about this. You know, I slightly leaned Alabama to win the SEC title game, so maybe I'm wrong, but if I'm right, what's going to happen with them? I think it's the – Jesse, would you say this is the biggest single debate point right now? Because you listen to this stuff more than I do. Is Alabama being in if they win? Is that what's being debated the most? Okay, Jesse says pretty much. Way to take a stance, Jesse. So is Alabama going to be in? Well, if they lose, no. If Alabama wins, are they going to be in? Listen to me. I think so. I think they will be in if they win. I think they probably should be if they're in. Now, here is what we know. We know they don't control their own destiny. We know, not according to what Bill Hancock says, but according to what that committee actually does, we know that if Florida State wins and Washington wins and Michigan wins and let's say Texas wins, Bama's not going to get in. Now, I would look at you and say, I don't have a problem with that because I think most deserving actually comes into play here. However, I will also tell you, if you claim you want to put the best teams in, there is not a world under this sun where Alabama does not belong in. Bama absolutely belongs in. So I don't think that the chalk's holding this weekend. That's the point I'm trying to arrive at. I think Washington will lose tomorrow night. I think Florida State's got a pretty good shot to lose Saturday. By the way, the weather forecast in Charlotte looks gross. And it always befuddles me how a conference can be the ACC and can reside in a geographical footprint where there are domed stadiums, and yet they're playing their conference title game outdoors in December. Weather is going to be a factor Saturday, and it is your fault, not anyone else's. I love the weather, but I don't control the weather. So, um... I think Bama needs one or two dominoes to fall. But I think one or two of them will fall. Uh, I think they need Washington or Florida State to lose. And especially if both of them lose, then it's really game on for them. But I am very fascinated, as I have been for a while, at the potential Texas-Bama-Oregon conundrum. 
So let's, let's, let's walk you through this for a second. What if Michigan wins, and they will? What if Washington wins? What if Washington upsets Oregon? They've done it once already this year. And what if Florida State wins? They're a small favorite. This is more than a reasonable path that we could see. And then, so what if we got Michigan and Washington and Florida State there? And if they win, by the way, I think those three are in. And then Texas wins, and Bama wins, and they're sitting there. And, and we've got this debate about Texas-Bama. I don't think it's much of a debate because I respect on-field results. But I have heard more and more sentiment growing about how Bama should be in over Texas. It doesn't make much sense to me. But, again, if we're, if we're going down this road, Bill Hancock has taken us down about best over most deserving. None of it matters. None of that merit-based stuff matters. None of your on-the-field results matter. It's just... Who would Vegas favor right now? That is not competition to me. That's not sports to me. But, hey, if we're looking for best over most deserving, then all of a sudden I guess we have a debate there. Um, How would Georgia get handled? Uh, This kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier today. How would Georgia get handled? And, by the way, before I get to Georgia, you know what? The most likely thing with Bama is they end up in a one-on-one scenario with Oregon. To me, that's the most likely. Like, I think Michigan's going to win. I think Texas is going to win, and I think, I think both of them are in. I, I think that we're going to end up getting to a place where maybe you've got Bama, Oregon with one spot left. And I know that Oregon's been ranked ahead of Bama right now. I'm not so sure they get in over Bama. Like, I'm looking at the resumes, and I have no clue how they're ranked above them right now. Um, I would power rate Oregon slightly above Alabama, but power rating and ranking are supposed to be two different things. Uh, the committee claims to care about certain things, and I've looked at those certain things, and Bama has the edges, and yet Oregon's ranked not only above them, but Texas as well. Be that as it may, I don't think there's much of a world where that committee watches Bama beat Georgia if it happens and win the SEC, and you got a one-loss Nick Saban with a conference ring down there, and you tell him, sorry, we don't have room for you, and you grant the Pac-12 champ access instead. Not an undefeated Pac-12 champ, a one-loss Pac-12 champ. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen um, if I had to guess how that committee acts. So I think there's still a lot to be decided regardless of what the order of ranking is right now. Now I want to talk about how Georgia would be handled. I was doing, uh, I was been doing radio all week, and uh, this has been a surprising point of debate. But again, if we go back to Bill Hancock world, it should be a debate. If we're going by Bill Hancock... And if we're talking about who the best teams are, there is no way, whether they win or lose Saturday, that Georgia's not one of the four best teams in the country. I don't really care who else wins. All the favorites could win for all I care. If Georgia's the one who loses, Georgia's in if you're putting the four best in. I don't think that's what they'll do because I don't think that's what they do. So if Georgia loses to Bama Saturday, uh, let's say we've got a Michigan in there and we got Bama in there, and we got Texas in there, and we're looking around saying, uh, well, well, Oregon won Friday night, and Florida State won. Who are we putting in? You putting a a one-loss, non-conference champ Georgia in over undefeated FSU? You putting one-loss, non-conference champ Georgia in over Oregon? If we're putting the best in, the answer is yes especially with the Florida State example. Georgia's unequivocally better than Florida State. They're not going to do it, guys, is what I'm trying to tell you. Florida State is absolutely in over Georgia. I'd argue they should be because merit matters. Results on the field matter. At least I think in a blended world of power and merit, that's the way it should look. And Oregon would be in over Georgia. Um, That's the way I think it would shake out. Now, whether it should shake out that way is a different conversation. I think that's the way it would shake out. Because the other thing, here's, here's what the other alternative is. The other alternative is we go from arguing whether any SEC team's going to be in for three weeks to two of them being in. You'd think they're about to let that happen. I don't think they're letting that happen either. So I sound a little jaded towards the committee if I sound that way. It's because I am. I just want to broach what I call the unfathomables. It's in the distant fourth quadrant of my piece of paper here. The unfathomables are the scenarios we have not dared touch because we don't think they're going to happen. It's Michigan losing. No one thinks that can happen. I agree with you. 
But do you notice the other one? The other one we're not touching is Texas losing. Everyone thinks Texas is going to win. I do too. I think they're winning and covering. But unlike Michigan, Iowa, the Texas line is 14 and a half. Like 14 and a half point favorites lose all the time. And Texas has not fared well against Oklahoma State in recent history. So, I mean, Mike Gundy's at his best when they're underdogs. If that one were to happen, uh, then you got a little chaotic scenario playing out because there's this world, and I had to write it down on a post-it because this is how crazy it would be. I want you to think about how backwards this is. I believe if there was, let's just say, one spot available and you had Texas, Oregon, and Alabama vying for that final spot, I don't think Alabama can get the spot because I don't think you can put Bama in over Texas. However, if and, and that means Oregon would go. I, I think Oregon would probably end up going. They, they may end up going. And if I remove Texas from that equation, it all of a sudden opens the dam where Alabama doesn't have this little artificial ceiling built in on top of it due to head-to-head. I think Bama could go over Oregon. So, like, Bama and Oregon were in both scenarios. And in scenario A, Oregon went over Bama. Scenario B, Bama went over Oregon. Yeah. So that's where we are right now in the world of the hypothetical.